Hello everyone, this is Amish from digitalbrainbase.com. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the admin panel for OpenWebUI version 0.4. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll first start by going over to our admin panel. And here under the admin panel, we see a bunch of different options and settings. So first we have one for users. Now, as we know, within OpenWebUI, we can add other users. So imagine that in your family, you also wanted to add maybe your wife, your sister, your mom to your open web UI account. You can do that. Either they can sign up when they go to the local host 3000, or you can add a user here, enter their email and give them a password. And they, they will be then able to log in with that email and password combination. You can also create groups. Maybe you wanted to create a separate group for marketing and wanted to only give them access to certain models. You could do that. Um, here, for example, if you allow model access, they will be able to see all of the models. If you allow knowledge access, they'll be able to see all of the different knowledge bases. If you go over to evaluations, here we can see the performance of each of our models when we use the arena model. If you go to feedback, we can see which models perform well at certain tasks. So here, if I go to ChatGPT 4.0, I can see that it won. So it was able to successfully give me a response. And all of this is user generated feedback. Under functions, I can see all of the different functions that I can use and download from OpenWebUI directly. So on openwebui.com, if you go here under new functions and select see all, you'll be able to see all of these different functions that we can load from the community onto our OpenWebUI. So suppose that you wanted to load in this function for visualized data, you can simply view this, get, and then import to open web UI. And then here you can simply hit save and that's going to save this function. Now you wanna be really careful when you download these functions. You, also, you only want to use the functions that from sources that you can trust. Here I have the Anthropic Manifold Pipeline, meaning that I can load in the Anthropic model. I will add a video card if you want to get a little bit more um, detail or insight into how I set that up. Then we'll go over to our settings. So here we can see that most of our settings are related to our user accounts and user profiles. So for example, do we want to allow new signups? Uh, what's the user role going to be? And what is the um, API key authentication? We can also set up our webhooks here and also allow LDAP. So suppose we wanted to increase our security, we could do that here as well. Under connections, here we can set up all of our different APIs. So I'm gonna add this to the video card, but if you wanted to have LLMs that were hosted in the cloud, maybe because you don't have a beefy computer or a laptop or something, then you could do that by using Grok, G-R-O-Q. Um, I will add the video card to that one. This is if you wanted to use uh, maybe some of your local models. This is the API from OpenAI. So if I click this, this would actually reveal my API key for OpenAI, which I use to access the ChatGPT models. So I'm gonna add video cards to all of that so you can definitely take a look at all of those. These are my API connections for Olama. So suppose that I wanted to add a new model or something, I could do that by simply clicking here, manage. And then from Olama, I'll first click here, select which model that I want to download. Suppose that I wanted to download, let's just take the Llama 3.1, an older model. And I'm simply going to copy this, go back here, and then I'll paste it here and then hit download. And then it's going to start downloading the Llama 3.1 8 build parameter model. If I wanted to, I could also cancel or stop my model. I can delete all the models that I've downloaded here. You can see how much space it would start clearing up. If I wanted to also download from um, GGUF from the Hugging Face website, I could do that as well here. Under the model section, here I can allow access to certain models. So suppose I don't want to be using something like GPT-35 Turbo 16K, I can simply disable those models. So this will allow me to enable and disable specific models that I don't really want to use so that it doesn't really um, clog up my model space. Under evaluations here, we can actually see the performance for the arena models. If you want to compare very specific models, suppose that you only wanted to maybe compare 
two models, right? You could do that here by saying, I want to compare maybe the performance of Anthropic Claude three five Sonnet to maybe Chat GPT four O. You could set that up and allow access to all of the users in your Open Web UI account, and they won't be able to see which model it is when they're getting a response. They'll only be able to see what model it is after they gave a feedback, like it's a positive or a negative response. So this way you can really test to see which model performs well in your own specific organization. Under documents, here we can set up all of the things that are related to whenever we upload a document and we want to interact with it, um, what embedding model we want to use, we can leave all of these things as the default, query parameters and rag template. Again, we don't need to change any of our, the main settings here. We can just simply leave all of these as the default ones. Under web search, here I've created a whole video on how we can enable web search using Open Web UI. I'm gonna add another video card to that one if you want to take a look. But here is where we can enable web search. So here I've set up one for Google PSE. And every time I ask any of my models any question and enable the web search, it's gonna search the internet for the most latest data. Under interface here, I can check to see what models I would want to include. These are all of my local ones. These are all of my external ones that I'm accessing through the API. Um, I can, for example, leave, enable the tags generation or disable it, uh, do the same things for query generation as well as retrieval. Under audio, I can set up my different speech to text as well as text to speech options. I'm gonna add both of those in the video cards. If you want to take a closer look at how you can enable, disable different text to speech as well as speech to text settings, uh, you can just take a look at those videos. Under image here, we can uh, try to use different models like the automatic 1111 or comfy UI. I've simply used the open AI model. So I've used the same API that I had for open AI and uh, simply paste that here. That way I can access the DALI 3 model. Under pipelines, I can set up my pipelines. First, I would have to enable the Docker container for that. And then lastly, under database, I can take all of the current configurations, my API keys, all of those settings, and then simply save them. Um, suppose that you already have those configurations saved. If you, if you click on that export, this is what you would see. I'm not gonna scroll up because it's gonna show all of my different API keys, but that it's simply going to save all of those configuration settings. And then if you suppose lose access to all of the information, you don't have to start from scratch. You have all of these things saved. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you wanted me to talk about future videos, then please leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll make sure it gets addressed. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.